Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Well guys, got some new equipment that just came in and it's not exactly what I would call vintage machinery. I got some brand new stuff here in the box and uh, what we've got is a set, what they call the Garage Pack from Lincoln Electric, uh, which is their Power MIG 210 MP and their Square Wave TIG 200 welding machines. And uh, this is something I've been looking forward to getting for the shop for quite some time. Uh, you guys probably, if you watch my channel, you, you know that uh, I do have a TIG welder already. I've got a, a Miller unit, um, and then I've, I don't have a MIG gun right now, a MIG welder. I've got one that's actually in the shop, but I'm borrowing it. It doesn't belong to me, and I need to get it back to its rightful owner. So why did I buy a new TIG? Well, quite honestly, guys, uh, I was able to get in on a rebate deal that Miller, um, excuse me, that Lincoln Electric was offering uh, at a recent show that uh, I found out about that they really just put a really good deal on this package and uh, it came out where it was, it wasn't quiet, but it was almost buy one, get one free for me. And I really kind of like some of the functions that are in these modern square wave units uh, that have the, a little bit more electronics in them. A little bit, you can really adjust things a little bit more. Uh, and hey, I thought I'd give it a try and see how it compares to my bigger uh, uh, Miller unit that I have right now. So I thought we'd do an unboxing. So let's get in here and take these things out of the box and see what's all in there. We're gonna start with the 210 Power MIG. So again, this is the 210 MP Power MIG uh, from Lincoln Electric. And we're gonna zip this joker open. So the way I kind of came across this deal is uh, I've got a friend of mine, uh, Jim Bollinger, over at the Do Right Fab channel. Some of you guys may watch his YouTube channel. He teaches for Lincoln Electric, and he was recently up at the uh, Oshkosh Air Show uh, teaching, and they were offering this deal up there as part of their uh, Oshkosh thing. And, and he got me on the phone and said, hey, dude, you need to check this out. It's a really good deal. And I thought about it a day or two and said, you know what, uh, I'm going to jump on that deal. So that's kind of where it came from. So anyway, at the top of the box, we got power cord. So of course, that's our cord to plug in uh, to the 210 outlet, uh, kind of a dryer outlet. And uh, this is a dual voltage machine. So you can also plug it into 110. So if you don't have 210, you can run this off of just a regular 110, 20 amp outlet. Uh, you don't have quite the power with it as you would with a 220, but this is a really nice feature uh, just simply because if you ever need to go off site somewhere and you don't have 220 power, you can at least plug this thing in and run off of 110. And the other thing that I really like about this is that, you know, you got these little adapters back here on the back that just plugs right into the the welder box, and it's real easy. It's a twist lock. These come on and off real easy. Uh, my Miller unit has that same feature, at least on the, it's not mine, the one we borrowed, the one for the, uh, uh, the, the MIG unit, but it's a bit of a pain to change these things out. This is super simple. Let's see, we got our, it's like our ground cable here. Nice. Uh, Got, we got it lined with copper strap on the inside, get good contact. So I kind of like to upgrade these to a, a little bit better clamp, but that's actually a pretty nice one there. It's got the copper in that little copper strap right there in the back so you get good contact. So, so we got a stinger in here. So it looks like this thing will also run a stick welder in addition to doing the, the wire feed welding. So that's a nice feature. I've got that on my TIG welder, but I don't believe I've seen that on a MIG welder before. And there's the wire feed unit. Got the little trigger and all that in there. And that looks like the cord that goes to the tank. Got our regulator. If you go on the tank. And that's just a uh, some hardware, it's got some tips in there, and looks like something for the wire feed unit. Set it aside for now. All right, we've got some foam in here protecting the welder itself. And 
So I'm gonna set this down on the ground and we'll pull that box out of there. And there we go. Nice little compact unit. So let's get it hooked up and uh, we'll test these things out here in just a little bit. We got everything laid out here now and I uh, thought I'd just take a quick look at this, give you my first impressions of the box. So uh, it's a little bit different. Most uh, MIG welders that I've ran into or I've used before, you know, have the, the dials up on the front for the wire feed and for the amperage and so forth and uh, there's, there's scales on here. And I already know that the, this, this unit here has kind of a computer built into it. It has a display here so you can kind of see what's going on. So instead of having the dials on here or gauges around it, uh, analog type gauges, it's more digital so that when you do this you'll see a number pop up on screen. Um, and I've heard some people say that, hey, you know, they don't like that because it's different. And, uh, but then I've also heard people say that they didn't like it when they first saw it, but once they got into this, they really liked this unit. And one of the things that I know that this thing will do is it will allow you to kind of come in here and select the material and the thickness and all that. You put it into the touch screen uh, and, I don't know if it's touch screen, excuse me, it may or may not be, but you, you put it in here with the, into the computer and it will give you your initial settings to start with, whereas on a, a more traditional machine, you either have to know or you have to look on a chart on the inside of the, of the flap there to get your, your settings. And, and once you get there, you can fine tune and adjust things. You can do the exact same thing with this unit. It's just a little bit different way of going about it. Uh, but that built-in logic is nice. Uh, open up the side, uh, we got the instructions. Uh, probably need to pay attention to those. A uh, couple of small things of wire here to get you started it looks like and, um, and here you go here's your uh, recommended weld settings that we were talking about uh, for different thicknesses and different materials and different methods of welding so uh, I'm going to take a quick look at the instructions I know most people would say that's cheating uh, but I want to make sure we get this thing set up right and we'll go from there so give me just a minute I'm going to start assembling this on the back side of the unit. So I've got it turned around and basically there's just two things back here. You got where your gas comes in and you got where you plug in your power cord. So I've got my little uh, hose here that goes between the unit and the tank and it's got the same fitting on each end. And we'll go ahead and just put one in here and tighten that on there. And the other end will go to the regulator here. And I'll just go ahead and put it on there. We'll get this hooked up to a tank in a little bit. But go ahead and tighten that down as well. I'll tighten that up better once I get it on the tank. As far as power cords, again, we mentioned before that they ships with uh, two power cords. Uh, one is a 220 outlet and one is a 110 outlet and I'm going to be using 220 so I'm going to set that 110 cord aside. I'm definitely going to keep it though because there are times uh, when I might need to weld on 110. Uh, in fact, <laughs> I was thinking the other day I've got a welding job and that I'm, I need to actually do it in the back side of the shop. I don't have 220 power back there so uh, I can just swap out the power cord, go back there. Again, this is a twist lock, so it'll only go in one direction with your ground. So make sure you get that lined up properly, twist it in place. And voila, we got us a power cord ready to go. Let's flip it around to the front. So on the front of the panel, there's only a couple places to actually plug things into. And um, you got a port here where you actually plug in your, your spool for, or your, your, excuse me, the, the cord for the wire feed mechanism. Uh, then you got the two jacks down here on the bottom. There's a positive and a negative, and then there's a cord coming out here that you can plug into one or the other or leave unhooked depending on the type of uh, welding that you're doing. So, uh, and it's got on this little quick guide here to set up for different setups here. Now, like I mentioned before, I'm going to primarily be using this for MIG, which of course is wire feed welding. And for that, uh, typically you're going to want to actually put this over here in the plus side and what that's doing is just saying okay we're doing a positive feed we'll put our ground cord over here 
in the negative side. Go ahead and grab that. Like such. And I'm just going to leave that right now. Now, this will allow you to do stick welding. And for stick welding, uh, it's basically same type setup. But in this case, what you do is you just unhook this one. Uh, you let this cord just kind of dangle. It's, it's disconnected. There's no power going through this. The power is coming from the socket. And you can plug in your stinger here for doing stick welding right there, okay? And uh, it even has on this unit, you can actually use it for TIG welding. Uh, it doesn't have all the full functions and features that a full-blown TIG welder does, but for doing just basic TIG welding, you can actually come in here and uh, hook in your TIG torch. Your TIG torch would get plugged in on the negative side in this case, and you would actually put your ground on the positive side uh, if you want to do that. But it's, it's, it, you can configure it for different functions. And again, I'm going to primarily be using this as a MIG box, so it's pretty well set up there, at least as far as those cables go. And then we've got our lead here for the wire feed part. Go ahead and take it out. So to install the electrode here for the MIG gun, it fits up in here. There's a couple of O-rings on here that's going to seal your gas and all that. And the way you want to put this in here is it just goes up into the front. But real important, over here on the inside panel, there's a little set screw. There's a little knob down here. You want to loosen that up, and it will just slide right up in there. And then once it's in there, you tighten this down and uh, get that set screw in there. Everything's nice and attached now. You've also got a little cord here that has a, a couple of pins in it, and that's going to attach right down here. I believe that's just for your switch so that it knows when you pull the trigger that, hey, go. So let's get that plugged in as well. So one thing I want to check while I'm right here is uh, make sure I've got everything set up in my feed block for the wire that I'm going to be using. Now, I know that I like to use a 0 0.035 or a 0.9 millimeter uh, wire, and you can get different wire thicknesses, and depending on what you're going to run, you need to make sure this is set up properly. So I'm just going to unscrew this little piece back here. This piece flips up. That's just your feed rollers that feed the wire in. I'm going to unscrew this little block here on the front. And I'm going to look in here because when we got the kit, it came with some little accessories for different things. There's a different plate back here for different wire thicknesses. The one that's in here is uh, for 0 0.035 to 0 0.045 wire, which is 0 0.9 to 0 0.1 millimeter. Uh, and that's, that's fine. I think I'm going to leave that block in there again. I'm using 0 0.35. They also have another one that's uh, for a 0 0.25, which is a 0.6 millimeter up to a 0 0.035. 0.9 millimeter. Uh, so if you're running a smaller size wire, you need to swap that block out. There's also uh, the little feed roller in here, and they, again, shipped a couple. There's one specifically for a 0 0.025, a 0 0.035, and then the one that's in here is kind of a variable one for 0 0.030 to 0 0.045. And, and I could leave that in there, but since I know I run 0 0.035 wire. I'm going to swap it out and put the one dedicated to 0.035 in there. And to do that, again, you got the block up here, the feed block up on top. You just rotate this little plastic piece here and that wheel comes right out. And I'm going to replace it with the one for the wire thickness that I'm running, 0 0.035. And there we go. And then you just turn that back around and we're good to go. So um, I'll tell you what, while I'm in here, I'm going to go ahead and kind of preload this up with my wire. So the unit comes with a couple of little small sample size rolls of wire. This is a 0.25 um, just regular wire, uh, which is it's, it's fine to use that. I, I like, I'm typically welding a little bit larger material, so I, I tend to go with the 0.035. 
it said the 025, but there's nothing wrong with that, particularly if you're welding smaller stuff, uh, uh, what have you. It also comes with this one, which is a .035. This is the flux cord wire. Uh, this is, takes a little bit different welding technique to use. I really don't use flux core much. Again, there are times and purposes where you'd want to, but for general purpose, I, I don't. What I'm gonna put in here is just some regular .035 wire. So what I'm gonna put in here is just a regular size roll, a big roll. It's gonna last me a while. Of, uh, this is again is .035 or .09 millimeters, and this is just a regular MIG welding wire. And uh, it just kind of flops right in here. There's a little, little switch there to kind of get that down and find the end here. I'm gonna just cut that little kink off. And we will feed our wire down through here. Okay. And right into the tube that it goes into. And the way this thing works is that that um, pressure from the above hooks into this little wire. The one on the bottom turns, this is just pressure on the top and that should feed it right in there. So we'll go ahead and close this back up and go ahead and put some tension on that wire and when we power this thing up, it should be ready to go. One other thing I'll mention while I'm in here is there is a switch in here and uh, you got two options. You can actually run a aluminum uh, gun with this thing uh, and that's an optional accessory. If you do, you flip the switch down but for just a regular MIG wire welding, we're gonna flip it up, so, um, and that's the way it came. And these other pieces and accessories we'll set aside. Oh, real important, I gotta put this block back on here. That just screws right in there. We'll put these other accessories up somewhere where I'll have them if I ever wanna change wire uh, diameters. Uh, also, while we're talking about wire diameters uh, on the end of your MIG gun, if you unscrew your tip here, you've got this, these tips on the end here and you wanna make sure you've got the right tip for your wire diameter and the one that's in here is for a .035, so I'm good to go. Uh, the set comes with uh, some extra tips and there's some for zero, either .025 or .035 wire you gotta make sure you're running the right tip for your wire. I recently saw uh, someone had posted something on Facebook where a guy had a brand spanking new unit and the, the, it was just, the wire wouldn't feed through it. And they were really griping and complaining about the poor quality of this unit and everything else. And uh, I didn't ask the question, but the first thing I thought was, well, do you have the right blocks and tips in there for the wire that you're running? Because if you don't, it's not gonna work. Uh, so anyway. Uh, ran off. So we'll get all this going and I think we're pretty much ready to fire this puppy up and try her out. I want to go ahead and get my gas hooked up now and uh, we're going to be doing MIG welding with this so I'm just using a mixture. This is a 75% argon, 25% carbon dioxide mix which is what's rep uh, recommended for MIG welding. And uh, I've got my tank over here just kind of temporarily up against the bench and I did put a chain on here for safety guys. Anytime you have these tanks out, you, they need to be secure uh, so they don't fall over. Um, anyway, we're gonna go ahead now. The regulator just uh, screws into the front here. And take a wrench and tighten it up. There we go. So we're ready to fire this thing up and uh, go through the setup. So I'm just gonna turn it on and it goes through a little boot up section here. Takes it just a second to get everything going. Ready, set, weld, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna go to the home button and we're gonna set this thing up for the first time. And it's, it's, it's pretty simple. 
First thing it's going to ask you here is uh, what type of welding are you going to be doing? And um, we're going to be MIGging, obviously. We're set up for MIG. Uh, we're going to be doing steel with that. And uh, this first option here, C25 is 25% carbon dioxide, which is the type of gas that I have. You can go through here, just turn the dial. This is if you're using 100% carbon dioxide as your gas. Uh, this, uh, let's see, we got a manual. This is if you want to just do everything in manual mode. Um, there's a flux cord, so if you're using a flux cord um, wire, you use that option. If you've got a spool gun hooked up to it for aluminum, which I don't even have, but you can get that as an accessory, you choose here. Uh, you got a stick welding option, TIG welding option, and then just the manual settings in there. So we're going to go back over to the first one and go to, we just push in our button that takes us to the next step here. It's going to tell us how we set this thing up. And remember, we have this, uh, the cable down here on the bottom that you can flip and, and back and forth depending on how you're setting it up. Well, it knows that we're doing MIG and it's telling us, okay, you want to plug this cord in over here on the positive side, which is what we've got. And again, it's telling us 75% argon, 25% CO2, that's our gas. Press to continue. Uh, now it's going to ask you for the wire diameter. And you got three options, a, point two, a 0 0.025, 0 0.030, and 0 0.035. I've got 0 0.035. We're gonna click on that. Next is the uh, thickness of your material that you're gonna be welding. And uh, you know, for 0 0.035 wire, 20 gauge is kind of the thinnest that that's recommended for. If you had selected the smaller wire diameter, uh, it would give you thinner diameter or thinner thinner thicknesses and same thing on the max you just kind of dial this thing in 5 16 inch is kind of the max recommended for a point zero three five wire so anyway we've got that um, I think I'm going to be doing something about 3 16 uh, for a test weld here so we'll go ahead and click that and when you do it brings you up to this screen this is the screen you're going to be using when you're just welding and uh, just like on a typical uh, MIG unit, you know, there's, there's two, usually two dials, you got your wire feed and you have your uh, power settings and this does the same thing. So this is recommending, you know, so if you were to open up the, the, the front and look on the chart, it, this would be the recommended settings for everything that you put in there, but it is completely adjustable. So this is your wire feed, you know, if I want to go higher or lower, I can, it's kind of got that green area in there which is your uh, is kind of what they're saying is the recommended zone but hey if you want to go into the red no problem uh, you can dial in whatever the heck you want to it's not a problem at all we we'll go back to the just default settings same thing on your power here you know you can go up or down uh, fine-tune it for whatever you're doing so uh, no problem at all anyway we'll got all that going and I think we're ready to do a little test weld. So because this is a new spool of wire we got in here, I need to actually feed my wire out to the end and everything's set up so it should just uh, go ahead and start pulling through and I'm just going to let it come on out, out. So yeah, it looks like our wire is feeding. So it's just got to go all the way down that tube and come out up here. I guess I could speed my, I manually just Turning that up to maximum speed to get it on out a little bit quicker. I feel it coming, there we go. Turn that back down to where it's supposed to be. And we'll cut that off. All right, let me get suited up and uh, we're gonna do a quick test weld. All right, we got our gas turned on over here. Uh, got our ground hooked up to the table. I got some metal here. This is uh, some, I think, 3 16 inch thick. We got everything set up for that. Let's give her a try. Well, there you go guys, first weld right out of the box. Default settings and everything uh, looks pretty dang good to me, so uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I think we're ready to go with this unit.
Well, there you go, guys. Uh, we have our Lincoln Electric Power MIG 210 MP all set up and going right out of the box to making the first weld. Uh, if you get in one of these units, you can kind of see how it's done, getting it set up. Uh, but with that, uh, I'm happy with this so far. Time will tell as to how well it holds up and really does in my shop. But based on what I have heard from other people's experiences, I have high, op uh, or high hopes for it. I think it's going to do really well for me. Uh, I'm excited to use it. We've got the other half of the garage pack, the TIG 200, back here in the back. I'm going to do that as a separate unboxing and setup video. And uh, we'll do that one. Uh, it'll be probably shortly after this one. So if you want to see how to do that one, uh, check out that video. And with that, that's going to be a wrap on this video. As always, thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel uh, for all kinds of stuff on metalworking, uh, woodworking, you name it, machine shop, welding, fabrication, a little bit of everything, just shop work in general. Come check out my channel, uh, subscribe, leave me a thumbs up if you liked what you saw, and uh, if you'd like to, you can leave some comments down below. And uh, we'll talk to you next time around. Thanks for watching, guys.